from Fenwick Parish Church for the wider community and also for Hall House Care Home who pick up the service. May you all know God's blessing in these really difficult days from our worship together and may you draw near to his presence as he certainly draws near to us wherever we are. Um, I have some intimations. There will be a meeting of the Kirk session tomorrow night, that's Monday the 18th of January at half past seven. And Kevin will be sending out the Zoom access codes later. I want to ask you, ask for your help about uh, a charity called Medic to Medic. A friend of mine who's a retired GP supports the charity Medic to Medic in Malawi and in other countries in Africa. This charity provides finance and accommodation for young women and men from these countries who want to train as physiotherapists, um, as occupational therapists, as nurses and as doctors. And it's so that they can work in their own communities to improve the medical care there. Now, a fundraising project has begun quite recently where ordinary medication packaging can be used to be recycled for hard cash. Now, what I'm talking about is this kind of thing, just the empty trees, even just paracetamol trees, these kind of empty trees that you can use. If you can, and you would like to be involved in this, um, can you keep your tablet trees, the safety packaging, that's made from plastic and tin foil, and I'll collect it from you at some point when it's safe to do so and the restrictions have been lifted. And I would really appreciate if you can help me out with that and, and pass the word round. It is with a very heavy heart that I ask you, and I know you're already doing it, to keep Jeanette and Jenny McCallion in your prayers as they grieve for Jim who died so very suddenly last week. Rita Devlin has also sadly died and her daughter is poorly. There are now too many members of this community ill and dying with COVID. And we feel now as never before, this disease in our streets and on our doorsteps. Please do all that you can to keep your family and your neighbors and yourselves safe. You may remember that last week I spoke of the funeral of Drew Douglas. Now sadly Drew's brother Gordon died a few days later and so theirs will be a joint funeral service now on the 2nd of February. They were together all their lives and so it seems fitting that their funeral will be together too. So and I know that you will remember our John, their cousin, in your prayers. Let us pray now. Heavenly Father, you have not made us for the dark sadness of death, but for everlasting light and life with you. Yet today, so many we know and love are walking in the valley of the shadow and feel bereft and bewildered and lost. Bring your comfort to them and your guiding light into their hearts. Surround them with your steadfast love and faithful care at this sad and sacred time. We pray your blessing on Jim, Drew, Gordon, Rita and all others who have been separated from us this last week and your protection and safekeeping for those left behind here. We know that you are a faithful God and you will not let us go until we are all safely gathered into your eternal kingdom. Hear our prayers in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. And now our call to worship. Christ, whose glory fills the skies, Christ, the true and only light, Son of righteousness, arise, triumph o'er the shades of night. 
day spring from on high be near, day star in my heart appear. Visit then the soul of mine, pierce the gloom of sin and grief. Fill me, radiance divine, scatter all my unbelief. More and more thy self display, shining to the perfect day. Let's join together as we sing our first hymn. We're going to sing from the Red Hymn Book, number 40. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let's join our hearts together in prayer. Living and Lord our God, we proclaim your glory. We gather in community to worship you. By our togetherness, we witness to your sovereignty and grace. We know you as our Heavenly Father, and you know us as the children of your heart and family. What can we say? Your grace and compassion, your watchful care and help is all around us. You walk before us, ever caring and <coughs> to lead when we ask it, ready to carry us when we are too weak quick to lift us up when we fall. Yet we still try to live parts of our life without you. We forget to involve you in the ordinary things. We try to manage and often think that we succeed, only to find that our lives are diminished without you. Our days lack the light of your presence and our nights lack the comfort of your keeping. All this does 
is remind us that while you are always with us, we are distracted and forget about you. Forgive this habit in us and keep the distractions at bay that we will better depend on you and more willingly involve you in all of our life. We thank you with hearts of gratitude for all your grace, for the blessings of home and family life, for good neighbours and friends, for the security of community life and the national fabric of society and responsibility. May we respond to your great and generous compassion in how we live our own lives. May we remember your son sent to gather us back to you and his giving of his life in obedient sacrifice for each one of us. In that remembering, may we continually seek out and follow Jesus in every part of our lives so that our relationships with you and with each other become more dependent on grace and more witness to your love at work in us. In adoration and in response to your love, we now pray together as Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. This morning, our readings will be read by Alistair Neesmith. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, the first reading is taken from Lamentations, chapter 3, reading from verses 21 to 26. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. And the New Testament reading is taken from Luke chapter 2, reading from verse 21 to 33. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. When the time of their purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace, 
for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Amen. Thank you, Alistair, for those readings. Last week, I was at a two-day theological conference. Now, unfortunately, it wasn't the jolly to the people's hydro that had been first planned. So there was no swapping of home comforts for hotel surroundings. No visiting the famous gin greenhouse, and there was no chance to debate and discuss the speakers and the topic, which was this year, the Psalms found in the Old Testament. Well, the whole conference was on Zoom from the home comforts of this study. And good as it was, I missed the opportunity for some of the academic and theological stretching, which comes from spending time with others interested in the same subject matter. One of the subjects which generated a lot of interest was the part of the Psalms that are usually missed out when Psalms are read during public worship. The Psalms span around 800 years of Israelite life, culture and history. And so there were difficult and horrible bits in the lifetime of the Hebrew generations, which might account for some of the unfathomable words that were written. There are many Psalms of lament, of questioning Yahweh, the Hebrew word for God. Many questions cried out to the Lord in bewilderment and in anger, in pain and in anxiety. Now, in the last 100 years of, the gener of our generations of Western Christian culture, and most especially after the Great War, lament became very out of fashion. It sounded like complaining. And who were we to complain to God about our life and our lot? There was a culture encouraged of being grateful for whatever circumstance was allotted to us and a need for self-examination and repentance if there was trouble visited upon us. But more recently, and actually even before this last year, this idea of complaint has been looked at again, and the difference between complaint and lament examined. Complaint has been questioned by theological commentators, and a more honest approach to our feelings has been suggested, because there is a difference between complaint and lamenting. Now, does God want us to be polite in our prayers, whether public or personal? Does he want us to avoid talking about how we feel? Does he want us to stay emotionally distant from him when we're unhappy? I don't think so. Our God already knows how we feel. He walks with us through our life. He knows us so well. So to not lament seems almost to be dishonest with God, to attempt to keep back our inmost thoughts and feelings. As we grow closer to him, it is right that we should be honest and tell him of all of our emotions, not just when we are glad and thankful. Since the beginning of Advent and through Christmas, we have heard yet again the story of the foretelling of John and of Jesus the events of Christmas as told by the shepherds and the wise men. And today we hear of Simeon's experience and prophetic words 
as read by Alistair. As well as the facts, we have also heard the Psalms of that time. And we tend not to call them Psalms, rather that we call them songs and poetry. The songs of Isaiah, of Micah, of Zechariah, who was John's father, and of Mary. As you read these in scripture, you can see by the style of the print that these are set down differently from the prose. These poems and songs are an outpouring of emotion by the prophets, by John's father and by Jesus' mother in response to the events which have taken place in their lives. Now, after so many, many years of patiently waiting for God to fulfill his promise and for Israel to be delivered and set free from occupation, Simeon holds the son of God in his arms and proclaims that God has begun to fulfill his great promise of salvation. Again, these words are written in scripture as poetry would be, a song now known to us as the Nunc Dimittis. Now your servant may depart in peace. The Holy Spirit has revealed to Simeon that this child is indeed the Lord's promised Christ, the Messiah, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory to the people of Israel. And Mary and Joseph marvel at all that is being said of their baby son. At this point, it is worth remembering that they were in the temple that day in obedience to their own belief and practice. They were of the Jewish community and subject to the law, mediated by Moses and so many generations, yet still was practiced. And so they were following their own law and in the temple courts, they were there to offer their sacrifice and their firstborn son to God, as was the custom. They had been through so much in the previous few days, yet they were still bound by that law and demonstrated their obedience to God by their presence in the temple courts that day. There may have been angels in their lives and in the lives of the shepherds and the wise men. Yet listen to that bit of the story again. The words may have been spoken by the angels. But in verse 15 of this chapter of Luke's gospel, it is written about the shepherds. Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has happened that the Lord has told us about. Now, not that the angel has told us about, but it is written that the Lord has told us about. Now, this is significant for us, for it demonstrates the acceptance of the people of that time, that God uses circumstances and angels and other ordinary people to proclaim his message and to work out his purposes. And Jesus asks us to do that too. We are no longer subject to the law that Mary and Joseph and Simeon practiced. Jesus gave us a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. And we know that Jesus spent much of his time with other people and feeling the same emotions that they did. He loved and enjoyed the company of others. He did things for other people. He wept, he felt compassion, he cried out in anguish, and he lamented to his father on the cross. Why, he asked. I'm sure that you will have noticed by now that I use the same words of liturgy during the prayer of dedication of offerings and of ourselves. These are not my words. These are the words of Mother Teresa. Christ has no hands on this earth 
but ours to do good. These words remind us each week of Jesus' command to love one another and that what we do for others, we do for him. These words are a call to personal obedience as we strive to be better disciples of Jesus Christ. The hymn of last week affirms this approach to love and to service. Hester Hawkins' words of Heavenly Father, thou hast brought us safely to the present day are beautiful words of affirmation and gratitude and trust and faith and hope. But they are words of lament also and a recognition of not all being as it should. Listen again to the third verse. Shadows deep have crossed our pathway. We have trembled in the storm. Clouds have gathered round so darkly that we could not see thy form. Yet your love has never left us in our griefs alone to be. And the help each gave the other was the help that came from thee. God is using us to grow his kingdom with the personality and the talents and the skills which we have and the light in our life which we have in Jesus Christ. His kingdom grows in all times. There is no best time but it's always the right time to be the servants of the Lord. We can't wait now for things to get better. We are needed to care now for each other. And we do this in the light of God's great promise of salvation and restoration. And he will do this. So talk to him today. Be honest. Have the courage to say how you feel, knowing that the Lord is always ready to listen. I always feel amazed and uplifted that in the book of Lamentations, there are some of the most affirming words in scripture. The words which state of God, your compassions never fail. They are renewed every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O God, my Father. My hope is in the Lord. In our present times, we can cry out and lament and at the same time be sure of the promises of our God. Nothing can separate us from God's love as we trust and hope in Jesus Christ. Restoration and reconciliation for all of God's creation will come. May we know a blessing from God's word heard and preached in this place. And to God be all the glory. Amen. Let's join together as we pray. We dedicate the offerings however they have been gathered in, and pray for the people of God. Loving God, take our gifts and giving of what we have and use them to grow your kingdom, to bring the gospel of Christ to people who have no experience of Jesus' love and for your purposes and plans. Bring wisdom to those who will use the money in Jesus' name. Christ has no hands on this earth but ours to do good. No eyes on this earth but ours to see need. No feet on this earth but ours to follow Jesus to where the need is. As we have given, fill our hearts with compassion and our souls with your Holy Spirit that we may better serve you through serving others. Lord God, hear our prayers now for others and ourselves. We come to you with sad hearts and fearful thoughts of what the future holds. 
Yet we gather up our strength and courage from being in your presence and being together in the guiding of your Holy Spirit. You are our help, our consolation and our comfort. You are our strength and so we look outward now to others, offering the consolation and comfort to them that you have shown to us. Today, we remember all who are walking in the valley of the shadows of fear and death. Hold on to them, keep and comfort them, give them strength and banish their fear of the future. Remind them of your plans and purposes for good. May we be ready to do what we can to carry their burdens of anxiety with prayerful support and practical help. We pray your blessing on the national churches, on all who minister to others through worship and care, on all elders, guilds, members and the communities they serve in Jesus' name. We ask your keeping and blessing on all missionaries, street pastors, and caring charities. And we remember our friends in Sri Lanka and we remember our missionary partner, Fiona Kendall. We pray for strength and safety for the Queen and her national and local government functions as they navigate a course through unprecedented circumstances. Bring wisdom and determination to all who try to find ways to support families in health and education, in employment and industry and commerce. This week, we remember international events and pray for peace and progress at home and abroad. We pray your blessing and strength on all who are caring for others at home and in hospital for those involved in the vaccination programme and in the testing centres. Preserve them from all ills and bring them safely to the end of this time of disease and fear. We pray your blessing and keeping on each other, on those we know in this community and those we don't. Hold us all in your constant care. We thank you for the knowledge and the experience of your grace and salvation, and for your reassurance that nothing can separate us from your love in our Saviour Jesus Christ. All this we ask in his name. Amen. Let's sing our next hymn. It's hymn number 24 from the Red Book. God is our refuge and our strength.
And now the blessing. We have been nourished and comforted by your word and by being together in your spirit. Use that strength from the Lord's now to strengthen and to console others this week and to love and serve the Lord in what you do for others. And may the love of God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. Thank you.